Welcome to The Professionals. Uh, today, we've got Jonathan Littrick and Ben Kent from Meridian West joining us. Um, Meridian West, um, with a little bit of hope, help from Coast, is shortly to be hosting a series of um, thought leadership in 15 minutes masterclasses, where we'll be looking at the tactics of delivering um, successful campaigns. But in, in advance of that series, I thought it would be fantastic to have Ben and Jonathan join us um, to share some of their thoughts on how thought leadership is shifting towards more agile outputs, um, on maybe a shift in some of the campaign topics that we're seeing, and some of the pitfalls that marketing and BD teams are facing at the moment when we're still yet to be in the office and yet uh, having the same amount of face-to-face -face time with um, with fee earning colleagues. So, welcome, Jonathan, Ben. Really pleased to have you Thanks here. Cheers. Um, the very first question, I think um, what I'd like to kick off with is, um, and, and maybe uh, your thoughts again would be welcome, but since March, we've seen uh, the, the, the demise of the in-person um, events that professional firms have relied on for so long. Um, and we've seen professional firms embrace content marketing in ever greater numbers and in ever greater quantities. And, and there's probably a bit of a feeling now that clients are being over-marketed to. Um, so the first question, I think, is, is how do firms sort of tackle that sort of feeling that they are being over marketed to? And how's that being reflected in some of the changes in thought leadership campaigns that you're seeing um, in terms of maybe some of the outputs and some of the themes? Um, Jonathan, what do you reckon? So uh, I absolutely agree that people are probably being over marketed to in, in the current era. I think thought leadership in terms of its kind of themes and delivery is becoming a lot more agile because time is of the essence now uh, more than ever before. The world is changing faster than it ever has and thought leadership and you know how we make it and how we deliver it needs to reflect that. So it's not possible or you know necessarily productive to spend months and months deliberating over on a project and over, over engineering it. The hot topic areas aren't staying still and how you deliver and produce thought leadership needs to reflect that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, you said that uh, people are being over-marketed to. I think people are jaded about content about uh, COVID. But uh, when we go and interview clients, there's still a very strong appetite for kind of thought leadership and guidance because I think people are, are very interested in, you know, what's the world going to be like kind of post-COVID. So there's a strong appetite for some of the bigger topics like digital transformation, cyber, we're getting a lot of instructions about ESG and kind of purpose. So, yeah, I wouldn't underestimate the kind of appetite for really good content on those big picture themes. And and um, in, in the outputs that um, that these campaigns are delivering, I mean, traditionally it was the big report, the big event, um, and then maybe smaller roundtables and things like that. How, how are the outputs changing? Um, I would say that in, in the kind of new era, more creative, kind of snackable outputs are much more relevant to, to audiences. I wouldn't say that the days of the long reports are dead, but with people being, you know, potentially overmarketed towards, you really need to kind of cut through the plethora of things in their inbox and, you know, marketing and they're on the receiving end of to really give them actionable, relevant insights that are tailored to what's relevant to them. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think um, people are, I think firms are being a much more kind of creative in the approaches they're using. So we're seeing firms using podcasts, videos, uh, I think data visualizations, but also using the thought leadership as a kind of catalyst for roundtables. So again, that's clients love kind of peer to peer roundtables kind of based around real content. So we're seeing the emergence of that. Um, it's it's actually quite an interesting time, I think, for thought leadership, isn't it? And it's actually encouraged firms to be more creative and to think in very different ways of how to engage with their clients. I, I totally agree. And I think it's kind of been a stimulus for creativity. And um, I think, you know, in the old days, thought leadership was slightly over engineered, almost a kind of academic exercise, you know, lots of partners involved, great big kind of treaties on a particular issue, high quality, but took a lot of investment. Now we're moving towards a model which is much more kind of newsy, journalistic. And I think this kind of over perfectionism 
is, um, you know, we're overcoming that and actually getting more creative, more interesting, more timely thought leadership. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things um, we've I've noticed is that firms, there's a, 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 a they're much more agile um, in the way that they're creating this and the way that they're reporting um uh thought leadership there's a lot more snappy pulse surveys for example um and things like that and and i just wondered um if you've seen any changes in the way firms are using um the way firms are uh, engaging with their internal audiences and, ex and external audiences to sort of really foster that agility and i mean for example there's some really clever things going on with sort of dashboards that allow you to play around with data um, and really allow stakeholders to interact with that data in some quite interesting ways. Just um, what, are, what have you guys been seeing there? Um, so, yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. I think dashboards in particular are something that have been rising up the agenda even pre-COVID, but with you know many uh, roles going fully remote for the foreseeable future, it's a very easy way of people accessing thought leadership. And it's a very effective way of creating personalized, tailored outputs. So we have a number of dashboards that we run with kind of big four magic circle clients that um, helps their clients and internal stakeholders and prospects access kind of tailored insights to them. Yeah, and I think that makes a huge difference, you know, because it's the normal business development of kind of corporate hospitality is virtually impossible. So I think, you know, offering to clients, this is how you benchmark against your peers, adds, gives them tremendous value. You know, they can benchmark how they're running the tax function on the legal function versus their peer group. So they, and you can create some interesting segmentations or benchmarking exercises. And also what you can then do is the partner can sit down with the client and talk through the results where there's under and over performance and also how that help that firm can can help them in the future. So it's a kind of win-win, tremendous added value for the client, but also a terrific way of getting meetings and unearthing opportunities for the partners. J just to add to that, yeah, I would say it's absolutely a win-win. So it's great for, for clients to access it because they can look at where they are, where their peers are, what their peers are doing that they're not, you know, where they're potentially ahead. But then it's great for the firm running the dashboard and uh, running the, the project because it immediately identifies sales opportunities and it gets you in the room uh, with senior people who might be difficult to access normally. Yeah, you, um, so we had um, one uh, very large law firm that did, did a benchmarking exercise like that. And I think just over the course of a few weeks, they'd set up 60 meetings with really important clients to sit down with their partners. Uh, and so that's a you know, kind of excellent return on investment. Do you, um, with, the, with these kinds of dashboards, do you need a lot of data going into these dashboards to make them work effectively? I mean, uh, maybe give us a very brief idea of, of how how they work. So the dashboard is an, is an online tool. So you would access it through a web browser and you, you don't need a huge amount of data. Um, you know, we would say a sweet spot would be, in terms of collection, would be around 100 to 200 respondents but you collect data, you link it up to a dashboard, and then it's a fairly pain, painless process. Um, and then you can analyze the data uh, without having technical expertise. And it, it takes out a lot of the time that is usually involved in producing you know, chart decks and, and tailoring presentations towards clients. The, the other thing is you don't, it doesn't have to be survey data. So we've had a big four client that has put in kind of um, data from the financial statements of some of their big asset management clients and that's created a nice simple sort of digital interface so yeah you can use it in a number of ways and you, you can use any pretty much any number of data sources to complement each other so you could go and collect data and then combine it with you know existing data from databases you know online sources etc yeah it's, um, it is absolutely fascinating I mean, one of the, the, the final questions, I think, um, uh, Jonathan, Ben, is um, that with, with thought leadership campaigns, there is always a high degree of project management needed from the marketing and the business development yeah. teams. And actually, when you're in the office and you can walk down the corridor and clobber partner X or Fiona Y, 
um, it makes it uh, much, much easier. Um, when we're all stuck at home and we're likely to be for quite some time yet, is how do you project manage um, these kinds of campaigns? Now, what are some of the things that you've seen firms do that is working really well? And, and, and what are some of the more perhaps more common uh, pitfalls that you've seen around sort of the project management side of uh, thought leadership? I think uh, it's a well-known phrase, but get your planning done up front and almost don't just think about the topic themes, but also what are the outputs you're going to produce out of it and what's the, the result you want? So thought leadership can deliver two results. One is it can build brand and the second it can essentially get kind of conversations with clients. And if you want to build brand, you want to design questions that are going to hit the news. Um, whereas if you want to get meetings, it's much more about kind of benchmarking. So you need to know that right up front. I think the second point is be really careful about your kind of project team. I think our most successful projects, you've had lots of kind of partner involvement from a wide range of people. So everyone feels ownership of it and you get all the great ideas, but you really want one senior project sponsor so you're not designing the campaign by committee because then it will become kind of beige mm. um jonathan what's your thoughts yeah absolutely i think it's always very good to get a range of stakeholders involved in the planning process but at the same time i think it's always good to have a kind of front runner figurehead uh a stakeholder usually someone you know quite well respected within the firm maybe a bit of kind of healthy fear of them <laughs> within the firm so that they can get things done and someone who's really a subject matter expert that can really yeah. drive the hypotheses and you know really knows what they're talking about yeah i think also a really good exercise is almost right design the headlines you want to get um so that gives real clarity to the kind of questions you you use and i think one of the techniques we've used um as a group is running a workshop up front called an ideas lab where you map out who's the audience what's the results we want What's the story we want to tell? How are we going to do it? Um, how are we going to measure success? And that's quite a fun but incredibly productive way of, of kind of kicking off the, the project. Yeah, and, and I think that works very well. And it's also very, very good at driving internal engagement. So when you have a key range, you know, a range of key stakeholders within a firm on board with the project, they're not just being told about something and going to use it eventually. They're actually involved in planning it, what the outputs are going to be. They're contributing to the success of the project and that really drives internal engagement and gets people using it and drives uh, the profile of the project in the end. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Uh, Jonathan, Ben, thank you. Um, the Ideas Labs, it's something Ben and I have been uh, with Jonathan have been delivering. They work perfectly well online. In fact, they work perhaps in many cases an awful lot better being delivered. Much better if you've got teams. <laughs> um, and, and, and it means you can quite easily bring in teams from multiple jurisdictions and multiple parts of the country. So uh, do get in touch if you uh, want any more questions about Ideas Labs. Um, and, and do visit, please, the Meridian West website for their Thought Leadership in 15 Minutes masterclasses. They will be well worth watching. Jonathan, Ben, thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you.